The title for this morning's sermon, and there's a typo in the website, the title is Deacons and the Qualifications and Resume of the King. Praise be to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In the past three Sundays, we set our minds on the following truths. Jesus is the one who ultimately ministers to his church. He is seated at the right hand of the Father with all authority and exaltation. And in his session, he gives his church deacons. Deacons exist to provide for and to promote the compassion and the care and the charity of Christ in the church so that none of God's people are neglected in the joy of his salvation. Furthermore, the gospel of God compels us and the law of God invites us to take care of our brothers, to take care of our sisters in Christ who are in need, those who need physical or emotional or mental help, those who are poor, those who are in trouble, those who are lacking family or friends, those who need tangible and practical encouragement, support, protection, love. Soon and very soon, we will, Lord willing, receive deacons for our church. Praise the Lord. New English-speaking deacons for the first time ever here at Highland. This is very exciting, very historic, and this is very serious. You see, the session of Christ is serious. It is royal. It is holy. The ministry of Christ is serious in that it is righteous work. It is glorious. It is majestic when received. The office of the deacon is serious. It is an office that is noble and pure, sacred and heavenly. And we know that all of this is serious because we see the qualifications, the standard that our God presents to us for his deacons. Think about it. We have the power to vote upon. We have the power to elect men to the office of deacon as a church. That's a part of church power. You can read that in our BCO, our Book of Church Order. But we do not have the power to dictate or regulate what kind of a man we can elect or vote upon. There's a big difference. We have the power to elect and vote such men. We don't have the power to determine their qualifications. That power belongs to our Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus, who is the king and the head of the church. That power is his and his alone. And in his written word in today's passage, he has given us his qualifications for his deacons to do his ministry in his church. This sermon is made up of two parts. It's very simple. The first part will be about the qualifications for deacons. This will take most of our time today. And the second part will be about why we should care about that. Qualifications for deacons and why care. Okay, here we go. Part one, the qualifications of deacons. This is what deacons must be. According to Acts 6, deacons must be men of good repute. This means that they must have reputations, reputations of being godly and lawful, upright and honest as they handle people as they handle money. These are the qualifications of our king. 
deacons must be men of good repute. This is what deacons must be. According to Acts 6, deacons must be men who are full of the Spirit. This means that they must exhibit the fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. But this also means that as they address people's needs under the sun, on this old and fading earth, they must be skillful in remembering the spirituality of the church. They ought to be heavenly minded and they, they need to remember the spiritual realities, the spiritual blessings that we have in Christ that are far more important than things such as money or earthly relief. Deacons ought to remind the people they minister to about the treasures that they will have and that they already have in Christ, in the new heavens and the new earth. These are the qualifications of our king. Deacons must be men who are full of the Spirit. What else must deacons be? According to Acts 6, deacons must be men who are full of wisdom. This means that they must have good discernment, good judgment when it comes to interacting with problems. But perhaps more importantly, they must have good discernment, good judgment when it comes to interacting with people. Problems and people, and sometimes they're combined. <laughs> they are to be slow to speak. They are to be quick to listen. They are to be slow to anger before their church members. They are to be thoughtful and good at teamwork as they work together as a deacon board or as they work together with the session of their church. And they are to know the difference. This is really interesting. They are to know the difference between a church member who really needs help and a church member who actually does, doesn't. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, we are told that if people are idle and not willing to work, it says, let them not eat. We are not to help such people. Instead, we are to command and encourage them in the Lord Jesus Christ to do their work quietly, to earn their own living. It's almost word for word in 2 Thessalonians 3. That requires a lot of wisdom, does it not? Does this person really need help? Or should we not help this person? In 1 Timothy chapter 5, we are advised to enroll older widows to receive help. And we are advised to not enroll younger widows who are able to remarry. And we are advised to have all widows first receive help, or at least try to receive help, from their own relatives. And then afterwards, come to the church, come to the deacons. This too requires a tremendous amount of wisdom for deacons. And so deacons must be men who are full of wisdom. These are the qualifications of our king. There's a lot more qualifications. We just talked about Acts chapter 6, but now we're heading into 1 Timothy 3. This is what deacons must be. According to 1 Timothy 3, deacons must be men who are dignified. This means that they must be gentlemen, men who are well-mannered, mature, reverent, and, yeah, classy as they represent Christ. They must respect the office of deacon. They must respect the ministry of Christ, dignified. And deacons must also be men who are not double-tongued. This means that they must not say one thing but mean another, thereby descending into chaotic unreliability or plunging into destructive speech or gossip or lies about the very people whom they are ministering to. Double-tongueness, no. 
These are the qualifications of our king. Dignified, not double-tongued. This is what deacons must be. According to 1 Timothy 3, deacons must be men who are not addicted to much wine. The meaning of this is obvious. Think, how ironic would it be if a deacon tried to help a church member who is struggling with alcohol addiction, but in doing so, ended up getting drunk together. Yeah, not good. Deacons may enjoy wine, but deacons must not be enslaved to wine. And deacons must be men who are not greedy for dishonest gain. This too is quite obvious. Asking men who are greedy for dishonest gain and then asking them to count and record and distribute the money that church members give each Sunday is asking for disaster. Not good. Deacons are to use money well, not love money well. These are the qualifications of our king, not addicted to much wine, not greedy for dishonest gain. This is what deacons must be. According to 1 Timothy 3, deacons must be men who hold the mystery of the faith with a clear conscience, men who are tested first and proven to be blameless. This simply means that they must truly believe in the gospel of Jesus and they must walk in a manner worthy of it. Sure, while deacons do not need to have the ability to, or skills to teach in detail to members the gospel of Jesus Christ, that's the job of elders, that's the job of pastors, while deacons do not have to have the ability to do that, Deacons do need to have the ability and the skills to encourage members in light of the gospel, about the gospel of Jesus. And you don't need to go to seminary to do that. Deacons need to be good examples also, good examples of faith, hope, and love for other church members. That's what that means. Hold the mystery of the faith with a clear conscience. Be tested first. Be proven blameless. These are the qualifications of our king. This is what a deacon must be. According to 1 Timothy 3, a deacon must be the husband of one wife. This simply means that a deacon must exhibit marital faithfulness. Faithfulness in his marriage to his one wife. He must reflect Christ and his love for his bride. That is the church. A deacon must reflect that in his marriage to his wife. Now, this makes a whole lot of sense. If a deacon does not have that kind of mindset where he uses his headship in his marriage to serve his wife and love his wife and care for the spiritual well-being of his wife, then how can he use the ministry of the office of deacon to serve God's people and love God's people and care for the spiritual well-being of God's people? These are the qualifications of our king, husband of one wife. This is what deacons must be. According to 1 Timothy 3, the wife of a deacon must be dignified, not a slanderer, sober-minded, and faithful in all things. Now, this is interesting. We see here that the wife of a deacon must meet certain qualifications as well. And there are obvious parallels here. There is mirroring going on. Like their husbands, the wives of deacons must also be well-mannered and mature and classy as they support the ministry of their husbands and as they may find themselves to be uniquely positioned to assist their husbands when it comes to showing compassion and care and charity, especially towards church members who are female. Like their husbands, the wives of deacons must also be excellent at controlling their tongues, keeping confidentiality, respecting boundaries, and not descending into destructive speech or gossip or lies or slander as they will 
naturally at times be privy to information that their husbands know about church members. Like their husbands, the wives of deacons must also be mindful of the things of heaven rather than things such as wine or earthly gain. Like their husbands, the wives of deacons must be women who walk in a manner worthy of the gospel of Jesus Christ. In other words, quality deacons must have quality wives. These are the qualifications of our king. Dignified, not a slanderer, sober-minded, faithful in all things with regard to deacon wives. This is what deacons must be. According to 1 Timothy 3, deacons must be men who manage their children and their own households well. This means that they must be fathers who are exercising good biblical leadership over their children. This means that they must be fathers who are exercising good biblical stewardship over their financial and material resources. These are the qualifications of our king. Manage their children well. Manage their own households well. All right, that was part one of the sermon. And rest assured, as I said in the beginning, that was the long part, part two. This is the short part. Highland, I imagine that everything up to now may feel like a lot to you. But please listen to this simple but profound application. Part two of my sermon you should care about all of this. You should have great interest in the qualifications of deacons. And there are two reasons why. First, dear Highland, you should care about all of this because it affects you. Think about it. All of this directly impacts you. Deacons exist. Deacons were invented to serve you and minister to you. They exist for us. This is why we should care about today's passage. And this is why we should care about the qualifications of deacons. But second, dear Highland, you should care about all this because it is ultimately about Jesus. Think about it. This is about his royal and holy ministry to us. This is about his kingship and his righteousness, his glorious and majestic glory. This is about his noble heart and his pure mind, his sacred will for our well-being. This is about his heavenly compassion and care and charity for us so that we are not neglected in the joy, in his joy of his salvation. This is about him. Perhaps it would help you if you thought like this. Think about the person and work of Christ. Think about his qualifications, so to speak. Think about his resume or his CV, his curriculum vitae or vitae or vetti, however you say it. Think about that his qualifications, his resume, his CV, so to speak. Think, he is perfect in his reputation. He was the perfect and spotless lamb that was slain. Jesus saved us with his wisdom. 
We are saved because he is wise. Jesus has given us the Holy Spirit. Jesus' words are pure and absolute truth. Our God does not lie. Jesus laid down his life in order to gain us. He was not greedy. There was no dishonest gain for him. Jesus emptied himself by taking the form of a servant. Jesus served tables. He washed the disciples' feet. And ultimately, he washed us with his blood. Jesus is perfectly and infinitely faithful to his bride, that is the church. And Jesus is in everything preeminent. He upholds the universe by the word of his power. If you don't understand what I'm saying here, then I'll just say it like this. In other words, Jesus is the deacon of all deacons. And while the ministry of deacons is for us, it is not ultimately about any of us. It is ultimately about Jesus. It is ultimately about our king. Jesus is the deacon for our church. And if he is that kind of deacon, then, oh yes, there are going to be some qualifications for human deacons who administer his service, his compassion, his love, his care. And so this is why you should care about today's passage. Simple as that. This is why you should care about the qualifications for deacons. Soon and very soon, we will, Lord willing, receive deacons for our church brand new English speaking deacons for the first time ever here at Highland. Guess what? This is exciting for Jesus. This is historic for him. Praise be to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It's about him. May the Lord Jesus Christ give us men who are qualified to be deacons for our, for our church. May the Lord bless today's congregational vote. May the grace of Christ be upon us all. Praise be to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, we thank you so much for the ministry of your Son, who is our Lord, our Savior, our King. Thank you that he gives us deacons. And soon and very soon, Lord willing, we will have a few new deacons from our English-speaking part of our church. Please bless today's vote. Please help us to do so with clear consciences and with cheerfulness, with joy. May your will be done today. But more importantly, help us to care about this, the qualifications of deacons, and help us to exalt you, Jesus, as we wait for your return. Come, Lord Jesus, come soon. We pray everything in his precious name. Amen.